Sports Leader, NBC. This is the Sun America NBC Sports Desk. Here's Greg Gumbel. Paris, France, enriched in history and artistic expressions. Like the Parisian artists who leave their lasting impressions on canvas, the greatest player in basketball has already left his indelible mark on a sport that has reached new heights worldwide. In France, number 23 is viewed as an artist, displaying the grace and beauty that will certainly last forever. In America, his airness is known as a ferocious competitor who can explode and create any shot imaginable. Michael's artistic impressions on the court has helped make basketball one of the most popular sports in the world. Now it's time for Michael to firmly etch his name into history as he brings his incredible talents to the global stage in the 1997 McDonald's Championship. NBC Sports presents the 1997 McDonald's Championship. Basketball fans from around the world have been gathering since early today here at the Palais Omnisport de Bercy here in Paris. They're here to see one man, Michael Jordan, who arrived here just a few hours ago with the five-time NBA champion, Chicago Bulls. They face a formidable foe in Olympiakos Piraeus, who have won five consecutive Greek championships. It is the championship game of the 1997 McDonald's Championship. Hello, everybody. I'm Ahmad Rashad, and championship teams from around the world have come to Paris for the chance to try and take over the Bulls' claim of world champions. But it won't be an easy task for the Greek team, who have already won 11 games in a row this season. Now, joining us for this special NBA on NBC telecast is Bob Neal, Hubie Brown, and Bill Walton. Bonjour, fellas. Bonjour, Ahmad. And welcome to you also here to Paris, France. The Chicago Bulls are in the championship game, but they had to defeat Paris St. Germain, the home team. Only got by them by seven last night. Big news in Paris, Michael's here. Big news in Chicago, Scotty and Dennis are not here. Bob, until those two talented personalities come back, there will be an ongoing question is how you're going to replace the offense and defensive contributions of those phenomenal players. Pippen so much on the offense. Crew coach and Harper guys expected to carry the load. Last night they were one for 16. On the defensive end, Rodman, six consecutive NBA rebounding titles. The Bulls gave up an inexplicable 19 offensive rebounds. But in the end, they've still got Michael Jordan. And that's always been enough for five NBA titles. Should be enough again today, Bob. Michael had 28 last night. Hubie, Olympiakos Piraeus, a suburb, by the way, of Athens. How good are they? Well, you have to say that they're a team with great tradition. Three out of the last four years, they've reached the final four of Europe, capping it off with a championship in 97. Now, you're talking about a team that's off to 11-0 start, three new starters, all with U.S. college backgrounds. Hawkins at the point out of Xavier, Johnny Rogers, Cal Irvine out of, and at the power forward position, and then Arturis Karnishevis from Seton Hall. They must excel this evening, shoot a high percentage, keep the Bulls off their defensive board. <laughs> hey, no problem. Sounds easy. <laughs> European champions and the NBA champion Bulls up next on NBC. Moments ago, Michael Jordan meeting 13,500, uh, I guess, plus the Bulls roster, here at the Palais Omnisport de Bercy. In McDonald's history, this tournament started in 1987 as McDonald's Open has become the McDonald's Championship. NBA 15-0. There have been some close calls. And the Bulls are going to be playing a good team, the European champions, the Greek League champions. And there are three players on the starting lineup with American experience, Rogers, Karnishevis, and Hawkins. Karlach, property of the Chicago Bulls and the NBA, will be jumping against someone he may be com competing with someday, Luke Longley, uh, for the Bulls up in the front court. And Tomic, the guard, excellent defender, he may draw Michael Jordan earlier. Use early. You see Kathy, Longley, Harper, and Jordan, and Tony Kukoc, 
who threw up a donut last night, went 0 for 7 and did not score, gets the starting nod for the Chicago Bulls over Randy Brown. Now, the rules here, obviously, NBA, FIBA, and McDonald's, four significant changes. Well, the game will be faster because of the 24-second shot clock, which all American players are used to. Six fouls, yes, that's standard here. Uh, and then the three-point shot, much, much closer to the game. Ruby will also be longer because they're used to playing 20-minute halves here, now full 48 minutes. I know that about it, Bill. The, the extra six seconds that they have to give up here, they're not accustomed to it. And you can see in the three day that we've been watching, they rush their shots. And also, it definitely is a fatigue factor, the extra eight minutes that they are playing. Dushan Ivkovic. Leading candidate for European Coach of the Year, four-time winner as a head coach. He has just done some wonderful things. Phil Jackson, of course, in what he says is his last year as head coach of the Chicago Bulls. Phil Jackson telling us before the game that the keys are going to be pressure the guards, particularly Hawkins, cover the big men for Olympiacos on the perimeter, and then identify the defense better with the changing zones that Olympiacos uses. Dick Mavetta from the NBA officiating and Pascal Dorizon from Cholet, France, in the western part of France, will join him as the second official in the McDonald's Championship, two officials as opposed to the three for the usual NBA game. So an interesting look here. Charlotte jumping against the much taller Luke Longley. Charlotte's property of the Chicago Bulls is 6'10", and basically a power forward should he make it to the NBA. Tony Kukoc, the waiter, delivers. No need for Luke Longley to double clutch on that. He's strong enough, he's healthy enough, get up in the air and throw one down. Uh, there's no way that they can keep the Bulls off the offensive board. It's always been a strong point for Chicago. Up and under, and I believe Charlotte's got a piece of that. This is Michael Hawkins from Xavier in Cincinnati, running the break. Draws the foul. Michael Hawkins ended the season last year with the Boston Celtics, played 29 games, and he also was a star, averaging 16 points a game for Rockford in the CBA. Now you're going to see this. Carlick gets a piece of that right there. A nice block. The key tonight, though, when the ball hits the backboard and rim, can they keep the Bulls from getting second shot attempts? Carlick, strong player in the middle. It's stripped away from him. Here comes Ron Harper. Jordan out in front. On the wing, Caffey. Michael Hawkins has to foul it. The Bulls' pressure defense ignited their, their surge last night. They did not shoot the ball well. Coach Ivkovic from Olympiacos was very, very concerned about how his players would react. Obviously, this is a whole nother level of basketball than these guys have ever played before. The Bulls have won all those championships based on the fact that they're the best defensive team in basketball, and they have the best player in Michael Jordan to do whatever he wants to do. Jason Caffey, out of University of Alabama, power forward with Dennis Rodman. Uh, the word is not here. Dennis Rodman, the word is that he will be around the Bulls camp Monday when they get back to the States. Well, that'll be good, but Jason Caffey has played terrific. In the opportunity he's he, he's had, he, he's not the personality. He does not have the dynamic influence on the atmosphere of the game of basketball, but he's a solid rebounder, can handle the ball. Very good acquisition there. Jordan nearly makes the steal. <laughs> you got to get it up. Anytime any that the Bulls give you that full court pressure and trap, you got to get the ball up the floor. That's a three from the corner. Arturis Karnishevis, 6'7", played his college ball, as you well know, I'm sure, at Seton Hall. Karnishevis hit a three and drew a foul last night that really clinched the win for Olympiacos. And the first two of the night for Michael Jordan. Jordan working beautifully off the ball, using the back screen of Tony Kukoc. Tomic, you know, the off guard for Olympiacos. He's going to have his hands full as Hawkins cannot finish at the hoop. He's going to have a problem, Hawkins. Ron Harper next up on him. Tremendous size advantage. Jordan misses. Longley rebounds. Bring it back. Bring it back and reset. Get the ball to your shooters. Bulls like to go into that center position early. Did the same thing before Longley. Cartwright was there. Who coach? Well, he's not going to have a donut tonight. Tony was 0 for 7 last night. Well, any time that they throw into the pivot, they run those putts. You have to always watch the down screen on the other side of the lane. The defender just ran right into the screener. 
That's John Rogers making the pass. Michael tipping it away. Harper to Kukoc. Chicago just looks so much sharper tonight than they did last night. Ron Harper missing the three. Tied up, that's Kanishevis on oh, top of Harper. Ron Harper was trying to call timeout, lying on the ground. And the European referee, yeah, Pascal Pascal Dorazon. Dorazon, from France here, ignored the timeout call and said, hey, look, jump it up here. Loose ball kicked out. Harper on the ground. Remember, he's playing with a very sore knee. He started the game with the knee sleeve up, pulled it down with that play. Now he's got it pulled back up. He's got some swelling in that knee. Well, last night the Chicago Bulls started Randy Brown at the point, Michael Jordan at small forward. Tonight they're going to a, 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 an outfit that you know is going to score points with Kukoc starting at small forward. Pernicious with the turnover and back again. Kukoc lost it that time. This is Milan Tomic, number 11, 6'2 guard. He's really the leader of this team, big clutch shooter. Well, he's the point guard for the last five years for the Greek national team. Hawkins. And you can already see the impact of Harper's size on Hawkins. Hawkins last night was the best point guard to date in the tournament. Harper, like he did to Stockton in the finals last year against Utah, just smothered him over the top. Ten on the shot clock for the Bulls, leading 6-3 opening moments from Bercy Sports Palace in Paris. Harper on the drive. QB Luke Longley's doing so much to help the Bulls. He's clogging up the middle. He's playing that pivot in the triple in the, in the triangle offense magnificently. Well, but you know, as you know, if they pass the ball into him, he'll make things happen. Oh, there, that, that was a, an excellent move. You've got to play Johnny Rogers. He's a terrific three-point shooter. But what we had was a major foul down inside the painted area. Now, he, here is your split. See, what they did is they hit the post and they, they run two cutters off. Harper changed his route and came off on the baseline side. And you always like it when your center will hand off instead of forcing up a shot. And I know you did that all the time in Portland, big fella. Hey, Bob Gross, Dave Tordy, <laughs> Johnny Davis. Oh, wait a second. The letters are already coming. They're already, and you guys just had a reunion last year. Absolutely. Come on. 20-year reunion. That's right. Oh, are you getting old? <laughs> Chicago leading it by a score of 8-5. to Carlos goes to the free throw line to convert the three-point play. By the way, did Jack Ramsey show up with plaid pants on? <laughs> no, but he brought those pants <laughs> as a souvenir. He, he refuses to wear them. Great pass, Jordan. Nice. Rodgers hit the field goal. I think I said three points because the foul was away from the ball. Thus, that's why Carlock shot the free throw. And it's 10-6, Chicago. Jordan's passing ability, his willingness to give it up. Makes him clearly the best player in the game today. So you're not going to beat Chicago from the perimeter. Uh, right now, Olympiakos has got to establish something inside. Carlock? Yeah, he's got the roll and Longley. Good hustle. Good hustle. Uh, throw it up, Ron. Look at throw it up. Yeah. Jordan. Caffey. <laughs> throws it down hard. Jason Caffey. Four players involved for the ball. Longley diving, Harper diving, and then Jordan lobbing to Caffey. Beautiful team basketball. 11 8, Chicago, 7 26 to go. First period from Paris, France. Championship game, 1997 McDonald's Championship. Every time that Tarlich gets the ball, he's always going into the chest of Longley. You're going to see a beautiful move here right now. Drop it down. Michael Jordan, if he would have shot at 13,500, would have been happy. But instead, he made a great pass. And here is Caffey sending it home. And Bill, you, you hit a nail on the head. This guy's a worker. He's a lunch bail guy. Very quietly goes about his business. Good inbound play as Hawkins hits the jumper. It's 11-8. And by the way, significant news there is Longley, who got in foul trouble early last night, has two early here tonight. We may be seeing Bill Winnington soon. Tomic. The score now is 12-10 Chicago. The difference between Chicago tonight and last night is sharper cut, better execution, quicker passing, more focus on, on the shots, everything they worked on in practice this morning. Tommy misses and Longley will run it down. Also, Bill, when you put Kukoc out there, they're no longer laying off of, say, a Randy Brown. They, they respect Kukoc. 
bucket. Let's get the score straight for you. The Parisian scorekeeper is headed wrong here. Right now it is, and you'll see it on the screen as they check it out of the truck. There you go. Chicago 14, Olympiacos 8. I think in the early going, so he has to like what Wong is doing. Not only the passing, but we know that he can score if he gets the catches. Hawkins on the drive. Nice. Had 22 points last night. Did Michael Hawkins, who played in the CBA in the States out of Xavier, Cincinnati, finish the season last year with Boston. John Rogers punched it away with 14 on the shot clock. Michael Hawkins just drives right by Kukoc. A huge height advantage. Luke Longley frozen. Nothing he can do. NBA.com. Log on and get connected. Chicago leading at 14-10, 5.55 to go in the first period from first D. You know, the distractions for somebody, anybody coming to Paris are great. But for the Bulls, they tour, they give clinics, of course, there's some marketing, they sign autographs. This all started when the Bulls arrived Tuesday. Judd Bushler is the intellectual leader of the team, as you'll see right here. French food. Yeah, French food. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe Michael's the intellectual leader, I think. Well, you got a lot of very intelligent players on this team. Jordan brilliantly on the baseline, executed out of bounds play. That's four points for Michael now. Bulls up 16-10. Well, in the early going, I think what's happening, anytime that the Bulls do a back screen or a, a screen uh, going parallel to the baseline, uh, Olympiak is just, they just don't recover. Charlotte, nice. double team, muscles it in, and the foul. Oh, Bill Wennington now in the lineup, replacing the foul play, Luke Longley. Tarlock's move, number 12, in the red for Olympiakos. This game is to not go around people, it's to go through guys. If you just keep your chest on them and keep your hands up around the shoulder and move your feet, you can force him to shoot shots that he's not going to make. Tarlock now the a three-pointer, and it is 16 to 13. Jordan flashing quickly from that weak side. And pulling up for the short throw. Michael Jordan has six. Hubie, his explosiveness away from the ball. Most guys like to walk in and just wait and get the ball wherever they want. And he really works for that position. You know, last night he just had a terrific game in 35 minutes, 28 points. And he's off to a, a wonderful start here today. And you're right, it's the explosive jump. Shot clock down to five seconds. Carlach, does he know it? Three he seconds, two seconds. Carlach gets the basket and the buzzer, and it will count. Chicago 18-15 with 4.49 to go in the first quarter. He did what happens with a lot of centers. He dribbled, stopped his dribble, dribbled again, and then shot and scored. Well, he held it so long, he already <laughs> forgot. <laughs> Winnington leading in. Rogers got a part of that. Winnington follows. Rogers gets the rebound. John Rogers out of Cal. Oh, nine. nice. And a nice feed to Vucevic, who missed the lay-in. Vucevic, their sixth man, just came into the ball game. Harper boots it out of bounds. It will belong to Olympiakos Piraeus. 18-15 Chicago. Tarlach in the post, working against Jason Caffey now. Look out, Jason gives up his feet when he stands up straight like that and allows Tarlach to just step underneath him and elbow him out of the way. Tarlach has six. That was beautiful, except we forgot to show you the dribble where he picked it up and then dribbled again. <laughs> Bad pass by Hawkins. Kukoc, who started here tonight in place of Randy Brown. He got in trouble with that pass. It's lucky that Winnington was just covering to get it. The foul inside Tarlach. Ron Harper and Tony Kukoc will be incredibly important to the Chicago Bulls as they play through this period without Scottie Pippen and hopefully Dennis Rodman will be back very soon but these are two guys Harper and Kukoc who were forced to take the short summer that, that world champions do have take it off to let those joints rest and Harper with the knee got a little bit of swelling in this training camp and Kukoc of course with the plantar fasciitis which he says is fine but until he starts putting up the big numbers Bob it's yeah that's injury concerns for four of the Bulls top six players. It's the length of the season, 100 games a year for seven, eight, nine years in a row. 
Look who's already injured this year. Pippen out for a while. John Stockton out for a while. Alonzo Mourning, three of the key guys from last year's uh, semifinals in the NBA playoffs. Yeah, last night, Robert Pat with Dallas broke his finger. He'll be out about a month. Well, their season is significantly shorter, Bob. <laughs> Dallas. <laughs> The runner, Karnischewicz. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It's going to belong to Olympiakos Marais. In the early going, you must appreciate the Chicago defense. They're challenging every shot. There's an extension. Any time that a guy elevates, they're going for the, not the shot block, but the pressure and the intimidation. Karnischewicz, good penetrator. He draws the foul. Karnischewicz. Shoots well from outside, as we pointed out last night. Karnischewicz hit uh, the three and then drew the foul to really clinch the victory. He also hit big threes toward the end of their previous two games. You'll be following up on your comment about the defense. A very tough call against Wennington there. Just a, almost a, a beg and a prayer to get to the line. But I think the Bulls will be much more focused in it every single night out, knowing the, the importance of getting a, a wins early on without Scotty, without Dennis. They've shown that focus tonight. Well, they have been struggling, though, with their shooting. They're, they're two and two in the exhibitions. Uh, outside of Michael Jordan, the rest of the team is shooting under under 40% in a number of the key games. Remember, Michael playing with those two very... Oh, great steal. Oh, good move. And the fadeaway, the follow! <laughs> they will never let him forget that. Will Wennington <laughs> dunk. <laughs> That's right. 22 Not only that. Bulls by five. Hey, but he looked over to the bench. He wanted to hear the applause. Right? <laughs> Kernichevis. Well, the NBA, speaking of the applause, the NBA has duplicated the environment of the Chicago Stadium here at the Palais de Bercy. With an air ball by Hawkins, this is Ron Harper, 2.41 to go on the first period. Chicago leading it by five, 22-17, Michael Jordan has six, Parlach has six. So Olympiakos, and just as I say it, Michael has eight and has that look. Well, all those two ingrown toenails that have played him this week, and he was saying that one of the doctors just dug a little bit too deep and uh, exposed a little bit too much flesh, but he really looked sharp tonight. And even better than last night when he did whatever he wanted. He says when he steps on the floor, he puts it out of his mind. And folks, he can do the putting the pain aside. Right now for Olympiakos, Johnny Rogers and Michael Hawkins, they just got to take their time. They're getting good looks, but their every ball is short, right on the front of the rim. Bulls to a nine-point lead. Michael Jordan, the artist. How sweet it is. You are watching the NBA on NBC. Michael Jordan with eight. Just how important is winning the McDonald's championship? We asked Michael what kind of approach the Bulls had taken as they prepared to play here in Paris. We can't go out there and, and, and think about losing. You know, no team's lost in the, in the McDonald's Open. Or, um, and if, we certainly don't want to be the first. So the, I think the focus is a little bit more playoff focus to some degree. Hopefully that's the case because yeah. we certainly don't want to be the first team to lose here. And there has been some discussions between the NBA and the Chicago Bulls as to whether the Bulls will be able to announce themselves at their home games as the world champions if they don't win this game today. Bulls are leading at 26 to 19, and Michael says we'll have none of that talk. Double digits already for Jordan, 10 points, minute 21 to go in the first quarter. A major issue tonight, they're rebounding. They're ahead 13 to 5 in the boards. Last night, they were out-rebounded by 7 from a much smaller basketball team. There's more purpose up front here this evening. Well, last night, they gave up the Bulls 20 rebounds to Strulis, who's a terrific prospect out of Belgium playing for the Parisian team. But tonight, the Bulls just everywhere all over the world. Plus the fact that uh, the defensive job that Ron Harper uh, initially and now Randy Brown is doing on Hawkins. Michael Hawkins, has, who has done nothing. Randy Brown, as you said, just stepped into the ball game. Also in is a new addition to the Chicago Bulls who's going to have some pressure on him as long as Scotty Pippen is out. He's the man who committed the foul. Scott Burrell. The Bulls picked up in a trade with Golden State, sending Dickie Simpkins to the West Coast. Morell, 26 years old, played at UConn, 24 minutes last night, and did not miss a shot. 
Five out of five total. Three out of three from beyond the arc. It's 28-20 Chicago. Give it to him and get moving, Burrell. Weddington on the baseline. Bull so sharp on the shots. The passes are right in there. You could see it in the practice this morning. The, the, the jumpers, the competitive spirit that they had. Bill, what I loved about that, they went into Michael. The center left Wennington. Wennington went to the opposite side. And then when the center tried to recover defensively, they screened him opening up Wennington beautifully for a mid-range jumper. And Michael already has three assists. Jordan also with ten points. Here is Michael Hawkins. Naki, who just checked in a moment ago, wears number nine. Carlotch, powerful move inside and draw the foul. Carlotch is 6'10", about 250 pounds, the highest paid player on this Olympiacos team at about a million five. Well, we can't forget that one of the key guys for Olympiacos, Fasoulis, is not playing. Fasoulis normally the center at a big seven-footer that played at North Carolina State. He's been the anchor of the... Uh, national team for years, and you see Tarlac's last season productivity led the Olympiacos team on the glass, but, but he's a converted power forward. Nakic with the uh, rebound, and there's a good time to point out offensive basket interference that is allowed in FIBA play and in this championship. The ball can be knocked away when it's over the top of the cylinder legally. It hasn't been much of a factor here. If the players haven't taken advantage of it as much as I thought they would, Jordan playing for one shot. Ten seconds in the period. Burrell, that's his first miss in this tournament. He did not miss last night. Five seconds. Plenty of time for Michael. Uh -huh. Oh, good strip. Really good hands by Vukovic. And that will end the first period of play with the Bulls up by 10, 30 to 20. And his airness, 10 points, one rebound. But look at that. Three assists and two steals. Welcome back to Palais Omnisport Merci in Paris, France. The Bulls had led 20 to 17, then went on this 10-3 run in the last two minutes, 45 seconds of the first period. And at the end of the first 12 minutes, Chicago with a double-digit lead. Well, Bob, Chicago shooting 54%. We said that if Olympiacos had a chance, they had to shoot a high percentage. They're at 39%. We said they had to keep the Bulls off their offensive board. Bulls have six offensive rebounds. And then we said, limit your turnovers. Already, Olympiacos with five turnovers. Also, though, Hubie for Olympiacos, two key guys, Rodgers and Hawkins, combined for six points. Hawkins has four of those. They need to be much more assertive offensively. Pernishevis missing. Rodgers with the Rogers. rebound, and he must have hurt you. And there's the young Russian Greek into the ball game. His name is Amanatidis. That's his mother's name. His Russian name is Zevrashenko. He wears number 13, only 18 years old. They say he is a raw talent, but he's still really taking uh, high school tutorings. And there are the leading scorers so far in the ballgame. Jordan with 10, and a pretty good balance with Tarlach, Karnischewicz, and Hawkins. Well, right now, with Hawkins, Rogers, and Karnischewicz, who just take their time. They're rushing everything. And, you know, it actually it's the anxiety of playing against the Bulls, guys that they, they know that they would have to, you know, uh, be in competition with if they ever played in the NBA. The big thing, relax. You're getting good shot opportunities. It's so difficult to get those shots, Hugh, because these guys are not really great at creating their own shots. The Bulls magnificent at denying individual talent. But the Bulls lineup right now, where are they going to find their offense? Randy Brown just took a knee to the upper thigh there, but with Kukoc normally anchoring this unit in the starting lineup, they could struggle offensively in the second quarter here. 13 on the shot clock. This is Wennington, good face-up shooter. And Wennington has six points off the bench. He came in early in this game when Luke Longley picked up two quick fouls, and the Bulls have their biggest lead, a lead of 12. And by the way, that previous foul on Olympiakos went to the youngster, the Greek-Russian, Amanatis. Did Wennington hear go wrong? Is that, is, that, is that why he hit that jumper? Weddington looks sharp as can be. Yes, he does. Looks good. It's nice to see him back, though. Well, he was unable to play in the, in the playoffs last year because of the plantar fasciitis tear. 
some nice penetration and step back there. Is that Isaiah Thomas and Bill Lambeer? Or? Uh, not anytime that you get a double team on a dribbler off of a fake screen and roll, screen and spot up, and you're wide open. Scott Burrell, Bulls new addition in the trade. Happy on the double team, shot clock to four. Nice. Three, two, one. Oh, it counts man. just beating the buzzer, Randy Brown. Well, they did everything right. They trapped hard in the corner. They cut off the rotation pass, and what happens? They missed the pass. The Bulls role players like Randy Brown, like Bill Winnington, so good. Last night, those two guys in particular shot the ball well, along with Jordan. Tonight, everybody seems on. Now, he spins into the paint, but misses the lay-in. Again, apparently intimidated by the Bulls' size and reputation, or the size of their reputation. I'm sorry, I like what they're running. I like what they're running down inside. They're, they're, they're running all that little curl stuff, getting into the lane. They're getting good shots, but you must knock them down. Eight on the shot clock now for Steve Kerr. Kerr, by the way, finished fourth in the three-point shootout here. Scotty Burrell, who went five of five last night, has missed his two perimeter attempts here in the oh, basketball game as the Bulls are up by 14. 9.31 remaining in the first half. Pernicious with the triple. He missed him, Hubie. Johnny Rogers was missed on the break. You want to get the ball to the big guys, particularly the big red-headed guys who were running hard. But because he ran through, Karnish was able to fill in on the delayed break. Are you trying to tell me that was by design? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Steve Kerr running things for the bull on the floor is right on the floor right now. This is Scotty Burrell on the drive. Offensive foul on Burrell. Good call. The big 18-year-old there just went right in there and took that charge head on. Speaking of Kernishevis, he's the guy that hit the big three-pointer and the foul call to win the game against Argentina last night. He comes in, the Bulls too late in the rotation to step out. Olympiakos trying to get back. Hey, did somebody say McDonald's? Fight Toyota. Every day belongs to you. Make it count. Toyota every day. And by Miller Lite, who reminds you that anything can happen at Miller Time. That is the River Seine, which divides the city in the left and right bank. I'm Ahmad Rashad here at Bercy in Paris, where the Bulls lead Olympiacos by 12. Must-see weekend continues next on NBC. But one of the greatest rivalries in college football as John Robinson's Trojans invade South Bend to take on Autry Denson and the Fighting Irish. That's USC and Notre Dame presented by the U.S. Postal Service immediately following the McDonald's Championship on NBC. Bob? Thanks, Ahmad. And Bill, by the way, in case you're wondering, USC, that's the other college there. <laughs> Most UCLA people hoping for a, a scoreless tie in that game this afternoon. Here's a summary of the game so far. Bulls on a 14-6 run the last nearly six minutes. Jordan, 5 of 10 from the floor with 10 points. Michael doing about anything he wants to right now. The Bulls moving the ball well. Absolutely, Bob. I always felt that once the, you know Scotty and Dennis went out, that... You know, you know, they'd have to pass the ball more to take advantage of the skills that the guys who are still left. Of the 15 baskets, they've got 12 assists to Chicago Bulls. That's new man in the ball game, Demetrius Karaplis. 6'8 forward, did not play last night, and now it is a nine-point Chicago lead. Ivkovic, the great coach, legendary coach for Olympiakos, he said he was going to go deeper to his bench. Last night, only eight guys into the game. Randy Brown handling the ball, defended by Tommy Chen to Wennington, who's been the offense here. Well, after Michael. Kukoc with a putback. I like the substitution for Chicago by putting Kukoc out there with Wennington and then getting Buschler in there at that small forward position and Kerr. You have Kerr, Kukoc, and Wennington that you can go to, and then two good defenders, Randy Brown and Buschler, to hope to get out in the open floor. And Hubie Biakas, two of six this period. Hubie, Tony Kukoc looks 100% better tonight than, than he did. last night. Yeah. Yeah. Nice poke Wennington. away. Four on the shot clock. Tommy, ball fake. This is the three. Great rebound, Randy Brown. Inside to Nakic. He's fouled. I think one of the reasons, as you look at Kukoc here, one of the reasons he's playing better is before he went to bed last night, Phil Jackson, the master philosopher, said, uh, Tony, would you like to have my TV in your room tonight since you'll be staying awake all night worrying about how badly you played? Well, we discussed last night how, how guys who are on in their careers 
they'll often play better in the second game because the first game, you know you have two games in a in a 24-hour period, so you come out and you play at one level and then you up it because you know you got a couple days rest. Although the Bulls leaving tomorrow on their chartered 747, they play Tuesday. Last night we came back to Europe where the man was player of the year four straight years and they put him on the bench and they started Randy Brown at point and Michael Jordan at small forward. Don't tell me that didn't have an effect. <laughs> Steve Kerr, the NBA career leader in threes, knocks down a tray. 39-27 Chicago with 7.15 remaining in the first half. Rodgers yeah. tried to make the pass inside, but hit the iron, and Karapolis couldn't come up with the ball. Here is Kukoc. Missing. Buschler with the rebound. Bulls just quicker to every single ball today. And Kukoc going to the hole. Kukoc did not penetrate more than once, if that, last night. We have a timeout on the floor. Bulls 39-27 with 6.56 remaining in the first half. The McDonald's Championship came to Paris for the first time in 1991. Who were they talking about then? Another M. Magic Johnson. After Magic and the players toured around Paris, they did the town very much like the other M. Michael. Magic didn't disappoint the French fans either. He did what he's most proud of in his career, and that is he distributed the ball. First, he distributed autographs. Distributing the ball, how about this? Averaging 19 assists in two games. In the finals, Magic took over. The Lakers held on for the two-point win, and Magic went home with that coveted MVP award. I wonder if they've engraved the name on the MVP award for this game tonight. Yeah. They may be working on it right now. But... Look at the guys who have played in the McDonald's championships. You've got Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Patrick Ewing, Clyde Drexler, now Michael Jordan. All NBA top 50 guys. 39-27 Chicago, 6.48 remaining in the first half. Bushler defending Karnischewitz, longly back in the game, carrying two fouls on Tarlac. Garnishevis loses it on the penetration attempt. Lob pass. Brown. And the foul. Coach Ivkovich for Olympiacos was saying that the defensive pressure of the Bulls is the biggest concern in this game today. And, and the little quick hands of Kerr, of Randy Brown, of Jordan, of Bushler just popping away the balls, leading to easy scoring opportunities. Bulls in complete control here. Saw so Ivkovic on the bench there. He's described by his own general manager as being a Bobby Knight type disciplinarian. Well, he's one of the all-time great coaches in the history of FIBA basketball. We're talking about a guy who coached the Yugoslavian national team four times, won the silver in the Olympics in 88, and he's won many championships and also club championships. Extremely well respected throughout the community. But Tiki, oh, beautiful pass. <laughs> oh, that's the, that's the weak side off the triple post offense. Longley and these players have run it so many times. And the bounce pass. The general manager for Olympiacos, Tiki Liviarados, was saying that in a positive sense about you know, the disciplinarian of Bobby Knight. Uh, the, you know, the fact that he, you know, he, he makes these guys into tougher players and, and better people. Karnishevis misses the shot. How about the Bulls bench? Winnington, six points, five boards. Kerr hits the three-pointer. Brown, six points. Watch the cutter from the corner. There it is right there. Anytime they throw into the post, the cutter in the corner is running back line, and that's the first man you must take away out of this triangle. Look at this. A beautiful bounce pass. Nice cut. Defender looking at the ball. I'm Greg Gubble in New York. Coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report, a couple of interviews you won't want to miss. First, Ahmad Rashad's visit with Michael Jordan, who talks about what could be his final year with the Bulls. And then Peter Vesey talks with Bulls coach Phil Jackson, who also appears to be in his final season with Chicago. Very interesting stuff coming up at halftime. Right now, the Bulls lead by 14. We send you back to Paris. Bob Neal, Hubie Brown, Bill Walton, and Ahmad Rashad.
43-29. Bulls match their biggest lead with 5.43 to go in the first half. During that timeout, during that timeout, Bob, the place was jumping. The music was blaring. The dancing girls. Now the crowd has picked up for Michael Jordan, who's back in the game. Sense it, you know, that got a, another 24 minutes in the second half, six minutes here. They, they want to see a show. Michael set out for six minutes. He got a bigger cheer last night than the French prime minister when he was introduced. <laughs> Well, 331 Chicago. Well, that's because all those people were stuck in traffic like we were. And Matt. <laughs> Hawkins. Starlight kept it alive. Good back nice. Bulls closing out on defense magnificently. Notice Longley is not on the floor. He picked up his third foul right as we run away. Bulls really not with the center. So they go inside, knock each with the rebound. So the lack of size inside hurting the Bulls a little bit on that. Well, Michael Hawkins, he said, is just crushing. Last night, 23 points, 8 assists, and 8 rebounds. It's a different guy tonight. He's just got to step back a little bit, and everything will fall his way. Yeah, he's Bulls, got talent. Yeah, Bulls missing it inside. Here's Hawkins. Make it strong. Ripped away by his own player. That's Hawkins right. hit the floor, but Olympiakos comes up with it. This is Carpenter. Oh, he's oh. missing. He follows. It doesn't go. Jordan saves it. What a half. Olympiakos is intimidated. Hawkins, four points, zero assists after the great numbers that you pointed out from last night, Hubie. Jason Caffey has got Michael posted down deep. Remember, you can play zone. There's no illegal defense in international competition. Michael goes around Carlisle. Oh, 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 baby. They came for that. They came for that. I came for that. <laughs> as, soon as, as soon as Michael saw Hawkins playing him, he said, give me the ball. And now watch Tarlock come on his double team. Michael said, forget it, will you? Slow feet. I'm taking it and throwing it up over my head off the glass. This is beautiful. He's behind the backboard. Yes, he is. Doesn't even look at the rim and still knows exactly what to do. Renoir, Monet, <laughs> Jordan. Oh, you've been to the Louvre this week. <laughs> last night we named a wine after. May as well go with it. There remained an issue last night. The place is sold out 13-5. A thousand media credentials given out for this event from all over the world. 167 countries catching this live today. There's the surprise substitution of Demetrius Karopoulos, and he knocks down the three. Bulls lead it by 11. We have 3.52 to go in the first half. Oh, Tony missed Michael on the back cut there. And on the penetration, runs into Karopoulos and draws the foul. And Scott Burrell is about to come back into the ballgame for the Bulls. Huby, Chicago is so good. Watch when Tony steps into the post there. Now, when you turn your back to a cutter, that's when he'll be open. Michael was wide open, and Tony is as creative a passer as there is in basketball. Just missed him. Well, you know yourself, it's not through selfishness. No, no, no. No, because he is always looking to make the easy play for someone else. And I think he really, uh, you know, looks at his game as he is the server, you know, which they call them here in Europe because of the fact that he would give up the ball instead of forcing shots. How about this? Kukoc 0 for 4 from the free throw line. Bulls lead it by 11 with 340 in the half. But there's a real sense, Judy, when you're playing with someone as magnificent as Michael Jordan, you just always look for it, particularly as the crowd is surging, to build it, because that'll just make it even more of a special event than it already is. Caffey picks up the personal foul. That's his second. Who coach goes out. Scott Burrell now back in the game. Bulls cannot find the range. Their fifth exhibition game of... The early season. Remember, the European teams start in early August, where the NBA teams don't start till October. So the conditioning level a significant difference. Coach Ivkovic for Olympiakos spent that time three moments trying to counsel Michael Hawkins to get him on track and build up his confidence a little bit. Lead cut to nine points now. You see Phil offering his television to crew coach again. <laughs> Michael also jumps in Tony Kukoc's face often when he's having bad games and did so last night. His airness shoots that one over the outstretched arms of Franco Nakic. 
15 for Michael. He seems in, in championship level form already. A bad pass that came and, from the And the reason back. why your statement is such a big one is because they were talking yesterday about how he couldn't practice almost for two days because of the toes. He had the uh, toenails removed and he was in a great deal of pain. And he was telling me earlier in the week when they first got here as he hits again. 17. And a little dance. All right. A little jumper with a nothing but net and a dance. 8 of 13 from the floor is Michael. He the, is the big toe of the ball. Yeah, there you go. But, but, but Michael was talking about, as, as Bavetta stopped playing away from the ball, he was saying that, that the difference between your conditioning in October and your conditioning in June is huge. Because you, you have to get a little bit out of shape to allow your body to rest and recover from the gruel and the grind of the season. Well, when you talk about Michael, you're talking about a guy who must give the crowd, night in and night out, excellence because he is examined under a microscope by the media on a game basis. There are very few nights that he has a chance to take off, as we know. And it's not just the crowd in attendance. It's the television audience that is now worldwide, as yes. you pointed out, with a thousand people here. Sure, because as soon as he gives you a couple of lackluster efforts, you know, everyone is saying, oh, he's over the hill. Uh, you know, look how he's huffing. He'll never do it at playoff time. Now he'll only average 37 a game. Jordan <laughs> working between the legs. Draws the foul. <laughs> Bronco Nakic commits the foul as it's his turn in the box, so to speak, <laughs> trying to defend Michael Jordan. The torture chamber is called, Bobby. You get isolated on a guy as talented as Jordan here. The crowd just building the pressure. Nock is just helpless here. And, and, and he's a very good defensive player here. Uh, excellent athlete at 6'7". But any time that you do not get a chance to play against the Jordan, you're not going to stop him. You'd like to just contest the shot and not look bad. Well, even the guys who have played their whole careers against them still get lit up for 40 and 50 on a consistent basis. I mean, the first time you play him, you're going to go for all those things. As we look at his 17 points right now, he just missed a free throw, make it 18. You know that Michael knows, you might not say he does, he knows that the NBA scoring record by an individual in this McDonald's championship is 34, held by Patrick Ewing. He'd like to, of course, have his name on that. And then we have that guy, Bob McAdoo, who in four games averaged 39 points a game. <laughs> with, with Milan. Yeah, with Milan, that's right. Minute 58 to go in the first half. Bulls have been in control most of the way, up by 12 points right now. Leading scorer, by the way, for Seton Hall. Uh, for Seton Hall. Well, he was leading scorer for Seton Hall. That's not all that wrong. Is Karnischewicz, he has 12. As he hit those last two free throws and is going back to the line again. Now, P.J. Carlissimo might be watching this afternoon. Played for P.J. Yeah. Uh, played extremely well. Average 18 points a game throughout his career at Seton Hall. Yeah, Karnischewicz uh, was recently uh, married uh, this last June to a woman from Boston. Lithuanian national team member. Was in the Bucks training camp for a short while. Spent two years in the CBA with... Rockford and a couple of years with uh, FC Barcelona. We look at the scouting report on Karnischewicz. Great shooter, solid rebounder, can penetrate, get to the hoop. The key is his man-to-man -man defense, whether he can stick a guy. because He's got the body type. He's going to have to be an off-guard, a, a possibly a small forward, whether he can stay with the real athletic guys like George and Scotty Pippen, but nobody else can either. Now, last year, playing for a team in Barcelona, Spain, he was named the European Player of the Year, the highlight of his career so far. Shot clock down to nine as the ball is knocked out of bounds by Caracas. Bob, they bring... Uh, Ron Harper back, you know, now Ron's playing with that sore, stiff knee. He's been sitting for a long time and have to see if, if he can instantly pick up his game. I think his movements are visibly looking a little. Oh. Michael misses a long-range three-point attempt. It was 0 for 2 from three-point land last night. Pretty good man-to-man -man defense here. Oh, come on, Jort Bushler, give it to him. He's isolated on the weak side. High post. Bushler on the cut from Jordan. <laughs> they only had three guys on him. Three guys. Everyone ran at him, okay? And you knew he was going to give it up. Now just keep an eye on this. Watch to the right of your screen. Hey, whoops. 
Well, Four on two on the other side of the floor. Tomic has defended him much of this game tonight, and I liked what the coach, uh, Dusan Ivkovic, said. He said, I'm going to have Tomic play Jordan, but I think he may need a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Tomic does not have the athleticism that he sees in so many of the off-guards in the NBA. Also not and physically strong. He's slim, right. slight of build. And he can't create his own shot to make Michael work on the other end. We're killing him here, man. 6-2. He's, he's a terrific player, and he knows that. Very confident guy, a long-time national-level player here in Europe. Stripped away by Jason Caffey as Tarlach tried to turn to the baseline. Four seconds on the shot clock, 52 seconds in the first half. Bulls are up by 11. They've led most of this first half after about midway through the first quarter by double digits. You know, Tarlach, Bill, in his first half, has met the physical contact and has held his own. Uh -huh. Judd Bushler, tough break there. Judd just lost the handle. Hawkins came away with it very quickly. Hawkins, who had 22 last night, has six in this game with uh, 45 seconds and a half. Two for one time for Chicago if they go quick. Gaffey. Jordan. Two, three. You see the three. Shot clock to ten. Kerr. Karnishevis. Hawkins on the right. That's got to be an offensive pass. He's and it is. I, I almost got it out in that. I wanted to say, you know, slow it down. Get the last shot of the quarter. You're only down now. And if you make it, you can get it to seven. Now, here you're going to see Bush the right hit. Now, there it is. The ball was just slipped right out of his hands. Hawkins' opportunity is to takes it right to the hole. But the big key there was reading the clock. As soon as you had that, slow it down. Make sure you get one shot. Leave about two seconds on there. The worst you could have gone was down nine, maybe seven. And you know what? Not a bad half. Down nine now. Well, they haven't played that well, and they're still right That's there. That's right. That's my point. Tomic, not a bad half. On Michael Jordan, eight seconds. <laughs> this is why we bought the tickets. Jordan's double teamed and fouled. Karnishimus came down to help Tomic. Hey, Bob, you speak of buying the tickets. You see a lot of the regular Bull fans have flown over for this great event. Uh, my ticket cost, I don't know what it was, 2,300 francs. Something like that. What is, they said that was a deal. 45? 40 to 40, 50? 40 to 50 dollars? Your airplane ticket cost 20 to <laughs> I'll tell you. Can I talk to your travel agent? <laughs> when I checked into the hotel, I give a tip to the bell. And I look at my French money. And I look down and I see cent, C-E-N-T, francs. I think cent, that must not have cents, that must be ten. Someone gave him ten francs. He walks away very grateful. Merci beaucoup, merci beaucoup. That's a hundred francs, that's twenty bucks. <laughs> big tip. <laughs> well, you, you're big time. I mean, you are so big time that not only are you doing this game today, you're doing an NFL game tomorrow. Congratulations, Bob, and good luck sleeping tonight. Yeah. Hey, listen, they're holding the kickoff against the 49ers tomorrow for Bob to show up. Uh, I don't think they'll do that. And Ooh. the buzzer, that nearly fell in. 54-43, Chicago by 11 at the half. We'll be joining Greg Gumbel for the Prudential Halftime Report right after this. is the Prudential Halftime Report, brought to you by Prudential, bringing strength and stability to America's families through insurance, health care, real estate, and financial services. We are at halftime of the McDonald's Championship in Paris with the Chicago Bulls leading the Greek team Olympiakos 54 to 43. Michael Jordan leads the way with 20 points. Hi, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel in New York. The NBA's regular season gets underway 13 days from now. By way of understatement, it should be an interesting year for the Chicago Bulls. It will begin without Scottie Pippen, whose injured foot will keep him sidelined for two months. And it appears that it will be the final season in Chicago for Michael Jordan and Phil Jackson. Here's Michael Jordan with Ahmad Rashad. A lot of people don't know how big this global game of basketball is. Can you assess how big this game is being here in Paris? Look, 10 years ago, in 1987, I can come to Paris. This is the only place I could come. I could walk the streets and, and basically just fit right in with people here. 
Now, 10 years later, I got people chasing me around the hotel, you know, it's, and it's outrageous, you know, with my movement. I can't move at all. So, I mean, the game of basketball has grown globally uh, in just 10 years. Jerry said he was misquoted in the sense that they forgot to leave off. You know, organizations don't win championship alone, which I think is a... You know, hopefully that, that was a way that it was, you know, misquoted, you know, because I, I do believe and I strongly believe that players win championships. The organization has a lot to do with it. They provide us the opportunity to get to the games, you know, and treat us when we're hurt. But no matter how you look at it, when you step on that basketball court, the players are asked to do a job so that it reflects back in terms of the organization being successful. You know, it isn't that the organization reflects the, the success of the players. You know, it's the other way around. If it's any other way, please let me know, you know, because, you know, when I looked at game five in Utah, I didn't see organization out there playing. And now the end is near, and so I face the final curtain. If you want to start the rebuilding process, you're always going to start up top, you know, and that's, that's right there with Phil. So the rebuilding process is on the wall, and I think we don't sit here and try to find ways to change it. You know, that's, that's something that the organization chooses to do, and they live with it. And we just try to enjoy the moment that we're going to be together, maybe the last time, and, and use that as motivation once we step on the basketball court. Is it too late in the game or too late in your life to attempt to let another right. coach try that? Sure, it's too late to start over you know, I mean, that's, I mean it's, 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 it's so it's something that's it's like trust trust has been built over time you can't bring someone in at the last minute and expect to have a sense of trust between the two individuals uh, I, I, and being that I have a choice to either choose to do or accept that then I choose not to if it happens I deal with it at that particular time you know I don't think it's gonna happen you know um, I don't think Scottie Pippen's going to get traded, which in essence, I don't think Phil's going to resign, which in essence, I don't think Michael Jordan's going to retire. So, we have opened up another can of worms. You may play again next year, huh? Oh, if Phil comes back, that'd be great. Only if Phil comes back. Sure, it starts from the top. That's it. Phil, no Phil, no Michael. Can you say it again? Yeah, but we did this when you retired. Remember? Yeah. Are you coming back? No, never. Never going to come back. Yeah, I did see Same that. kind of conversation. But, and then you said, one night late, coming back. <laughs> no, that would, but this I, would I be it. True. I believe in Phil. I believe in, I believe in you know, the, the trio. You know, and I got a feeling that Phil's not going to be here. And if I'm not going to be here, you know, I got a feeling Scottie Pippen's not going to be here. There you have it, Michael Jordan's perspective. Up next, Phil Jackson's outlook, his conversation with Peter Vesey right after this message from Prudential and a word from the NBA. Welcome back, everyone. Phil Jackson has coached the Chicago Bulls to five NBA titles over the last seven years. He will go for his sixth this season, but that will probably be it. Peter Vesey talked with the Bulls coach. So much fun this time. We're going to do it again next year? Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know. Three times is nice. At the end of the draft, actually, Jerry Reinsdorf came to my office and said, you know, at this time, we're staying with Scottie Pippen in the way we've gone the last couple of years. Uh, and I knew, you know, particularly uh, that time they'd made the decision to continue on in the championship course that we've been on for the last few years. I heard that uh, when things got really crazy at the end of last year, you got on your motorcycle yep. by yourself right. and you went to Montana. How many days did that take you? And, and what was what were you thinking on that trip? Well, you know, I did. I took a five day, 2000 mile trip, uh, you know. The average is out to 400 a day, but the first day I only did about 200 miles. And I was prepared to make the next move, you know, if things you know, didn't go the other direction. Uh, if what I felt was right didn't get met. And so when I, I got to Montana, my final destination, and uh, sat the bike in the garage and uh, you know, started to enjoy my vacation, I felt very much at peace. 
and very much comfortable with what I knew was going to come up. And we actually, even though it would seem protracted, our negotiation, I think the negotiation actually went very well. But up until then, do you up until shaky? Then, well, I wasn't, I didn't care one way or the other. If they, if they made a decision that they had to go another direction, that was their business. What stopped Jerry Reinsdorf from trading Scottie Pippen? It was very, very close with the Celtics. Well, I think the whole city of Chicago probably would have come to, you know, really a harsh wake up of, um, you know, something that they hold very dear to them going. It had to be some kind of a, a blow that would be a knockout blow. I mean, they felt that if they could do in one fell swoop, maybe a three player plus a draft situation in the future. I'm not particularly a believer in that because I think too many young players together can be a problem. But Jerry Reinsdorf had to know that public opinion was going to be against him before he ever went as far as he did. Well, I think so. And I think that, uh, you know, he, he's willing to go against public opinion. That, if that that knockout punch would have been good enough to give them the players that they wanted. I think they would have gone for it. Good evening and welcome to the 1997 NBA draft. I was in the building. Um, I was at my job every day. There were times when uh, Jerry came in and said, you know, we've got to go ahead as an organization. We have to look at things that would include not having you here in case we change personnel on this team. Um, this is a day in which you're not particularly needed, uh, you know, here at work. If you want to take the day off, great. Well, when he would bring in a player to look at? I didn't know anything about players. I heard later right. that he brought players in to look at, but that would have included a whole different type of a team. You know, that would have been somebody else. True, my advice might have been good. I mean, they could have probably used the guy's advice like myself or Tex Winner or other guys, but they chose to do this alone. So your staff was not included either? Right. That didn't hurt at all, Phil? No, I mean, that's a choice they, they make. If they want to, you know, not look at the skills or not take the advice that we have, if they're content with that, that's his business. It's, it's their business. They own the business. I'm an employee. And we are joined now from Paris by Peter Vesey. Bonjour, Pierre. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. You know, the Pippen injury, uh, Michael Jordan's status, Phil Jackson's status, there's a lot going on with this Chicago Bulls team. What kind of an impact does it have on the Bulls for this season? Well, you know, Phil Jackson says that people think he's kidding when he says that he hopes to be 500 when Scottie Pippen returns in two or three months. And after watching him play a game and a half here, I know he's not kidding. If Tony Kukoc doesn't step up big time, and he's even talking about a possible operation and not going back with the Bulls, then this team is in big trouble in the NBA. Okay, let's say Phil Jackson leaves at the end of the season, and according to Michael, that means that he's going to leave too. Is there any situation at all where you could see Michael Jordan playing next year? Well, I asked him that question, Greg. I said, hey, what if Dean Smith is hired by the Bulls next year? He said, in that case, I'm back in a heartbeat. But that will never happen. I said, but what if it does? What if he's rejuvenated and he wants to get back and try the pros? He says, then I'm back in a heartbeat. But I don't see it happening, Greg. I see, I saw Jerry Krause on the avenue hawking Tim Floyd t-shirts. <laughs> and I guess Michael doesn't need the money, right, Pete? <laughs> 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 All right. Thank you, Peter. Peter Vesey in Paris. You're this okay. reminder for you, coming up after basketball at 3.30 Eastern Time, Southern Cal and Notre Dame, a great college football rivalry. And tonight, game one of the World Series, Cleveland's Oral Hershiser against Florida Marlins rookie Levon Hernandez. Pre-game at 7.30 Eastern Time. First pitch comes your way at 8.05. It is halftime in Paris. The Bulls leading Olympiacos by 11. We will send it back for the second half right after these words from your local station. This has been the Prudential Halftime Report, brought to you by Prudential, bringing strength and stability to America's families through insurance, health care, real estate, and financial services. Welcome back to Palais Omnisport Bercy in Paris, France at halftime. Bulls lead it by 11 points, along with Hubie Brown and Bill Walton. This is Bob Neal. Bonjour. 11-point lead. Bulls led by as many as 14, shooting nearly 
Bob, the Bulls lived up to the highest levels of expectations that they're always held to. The rebounding and defense was terrific. The role players all came in and did their job. The offense came back. They shot the ball. And then there was Michael Jordan, 20 points. Beautiful, a perfect exhibition of what basketball was all about. Well, I think when you look at uh, Olympiacos, you have to just say that Rodgers and Hawkins are struggling. They must step up in the second half. Carnicia is doing a nice job. Let's get back, relax, and play basketball. You see 22 points from three-pointers, six uh, from two, six from threes. Bulls have, uh, Karnishevis has 14 points. Nakic off the bench, nine. The Chicago scoring, 42, 21 of 30, and only one of eight. Bulls struggled from three-point land yesterday, too. And remember, this is a 22-foot line. They'll be playing 23-9 when the NBA season starts. And we'll be back to Parc Bercy in Paris right after this. I'm Ahmad Rashad back here in Paris with the Bulls lead by 11 points. And Bill Walton was talking about the Bulls living up to the highest expectations offensively and defensively. But the area that Phil Jackson was concerned with at the half was their foul shooting. They missed seven in a row. So he told them they must shoot better from the foul line. Bob? <laughs> yeah, Ahmad, they missed 12 last night. Bulls were 20 of 32. And uh, Bill, I have to ask you as you look at that graphic, is that a new uh, plot, uh, spot, uh, plot of beard? on Phil's chin. Maybe Phil grew that while he was on the motorcycle ride thinking about <laughs> Peter Vesey and the, and the chaos that surrounds this Chicago Bull team. Yeah. But Phil, in that interview, also said that when you know what you want, what you want in your life, things are a lot easier. Phil is at peace with himself and he knows exactly what he does want, and he's going to get it. When I was in the seventh grade, my father gave me the greatest piece of advice in my life. I got laid off after 19 years in the Carney shipyard. He said, Chief, remember one thing. You are always a half a step from the street. And you know what? When you listen to that interview, that was sad. But because true. a guy with five rings was a half a step from being on the block. Yeah, well said. Well, it, it, it makes absolutely no sense, that, that whole scenario there. You've got a team, you've got the best coach, you've got the best players, you've got nothing but championships, and all the talk is about, well, when's it going to end? When's it going to end so we can start over? Enjoy it. Live it. Love it. Show the games three times a day on TV. Put the flowers on Michael Jordan's doorsteps. Wash Scottie Pippen's car every day. Bulls match their biggest lead of the game now, 57-43 as Longley came in. Remember, Luke is carrying three fouls, but he made them pay earlier. In the first half, Hawkins with the ball now was only 3 of 11 and had no assists. <laughs> Great defensive poke away. Bob, could I just get back to Bill's remark about Scotty settling for car wash? I think Scotty would like a new contract rather than his car getting washed. Well, and what he meant when he said give him a car wash, he meant give him the car wash business. Yeah. Kathy. Oh. Opening moments, third quarter. Pelé Omnisport de Bercy in Paris, France, the championship game of the 1997 McDonald's Championship. 59-43 Bulls, they've built their biggest lead so many times. All of us who've seen the Bulls know that when they come out in the third quarter, they often extend that lead. But Luke Longley just picked up his fourth foul. It, it, but Wennington, Wennington played great. Hey, no problem. Is, uh, in his place. Are these the same guys we saw play here last night against this dynamite French team that was only down five inside of a minute to go? That was beaten this afternoon by the team from Argentina. The little team with a 1.1 million dollar <laughs> payroll. Atenas Cordoba. A fifth foul on Luke Longley. They just called yeah. a double foul here now on Tarlac and Longley. There's no need for Luke to get involved in altercations like that. He's bigger, he's stronger, he's a better player than Tarlac is, and he's lowering himself to that level. Yeah, here comes Wennington now as Longley goes to the bench with five fouls. Bulls up by 16. Opening moments of the third quarter from Paris, France. Luke told me beforehand that he was just feeling great. His weight is down. He spent all summer on the beach there and body surfing in Perth and running on the sand dunes. He got hurt body surfing once, remember? Yes, uh, he did. In Manhattan Beach in, in, in Los Angeles, which is a much different break 
of the wave than at Hurt. Is that where you body sir? Manhattan no, Manhattan, no, San Diego. The waves are much, much better in San Diego than in Manhattan. Michael Hawkins blocked by Ron Harper. The height advantage, of course, just suffocating Michael Hawkins. Oops, oops. Traveling. Yeah, that time when he uh, Cappy got in there, he started to stumble, so he so he picked up a little bunny step, little bunny hop. Watch, watch Harper come into your screen right there. 6'6", six, six, fully extended. That's why Harper can lay off of you. He has the quickness and the, the quick jumping ability and the long arms. Well, Hubie, the Bulls went to the next level. I mean, obviously, five championships in seven years is, is unbelievable. But when they went to the big guards with, with, with Harper instead of P.J. Armstrong. Hawkins with a wraparound pass inside. Johnny Rogers gets it to fall and draws the foul. There's Johnny Rogers from Cal Irvine, married to a Spanish native, making him part of the European community, meaning that when he changes teams, they don't have to give a big fee to the other team. It's called the Bosman Rule. Yeah, I'm, we're really all happy uh, for Johnny. Uh, Bill knew him way back in the days of California. Uh, he, he attended Stanford, finished up at Cal Irvine, was drafted in the second round by Sacramento Kings, played for Sacramento, and a year with Cleveland, and has been over here for 10 years. Now, Look, right now, out, Tarleton. That's right, Tarleton and Winnington are squaring off here right now. You know, they may be competing for the same power forward job with the Chicago Bulls. Tarleton, a draft choice of the Bulls, and they own the NBA rights to him, so Winnington uh, uh, claiming his turf. It's funny, they, you know, Jerry Krause, who we spent some time with this morning, Bob, was talking about how Tarleton just sort of showed up at the, at the Chicago free agent camp. And Johnny Rogers can, just cannot find his way. Yeah. Hawkins, that's a triple. That's big. I'd like to see Hawkins and, and Rogers get unraveled here, uh, mainly because an awful lot of their friends are, are, are watching this game today. Relatives, everyone back home, guys who know these people and are pulling hard for them to have a good night. Five straight points for Olympiaco. And they're very good players. Yes. Two coach missing, Winnington working the boards. But as we've seen so many times, Hubie, the, the Bulls, so great at taking players out of their game and, and making weaker players beat you. Don't let a team go at its strength. And that's the beauty of Phil Jackson, the best coach in the NBA. The Chicago Bulls had led here by 16 points. Olympiakos has cut the lead to 11 with a chance to cut it to 9. They've scored five consecutive points and have possession. Tough to grind it out in a half-court game against this physical Bulls team, though. Yeah, yeah, they just don't give you enough easy baskets. That's oh, terrible. That's yeah. the first appearance of the ball game, by the way, by Ephemios Bakatsias. Uh, he is in the Greek Army and played quite a bit last night. Speaking of guys getting into tussles, he's pretty hot-headed. He had a few words with Reggie Miller. <laughs> well, you know, he's on an Army pass right now. Yeah. And, and he is a starting guard on the Greek national team for the last five years. So, you know, this guy's a feisty operator. I wonder if Reggie knew that he was dealing with a soldier when they had the little scuffle in Atlanta. That just would have fired him up more. Jordan, defended by the soldier. And three others. Who coach? Missing the three. Michael Hawkins has Pernishimus in the corner. Coach just ran him down, no whistle. Well, Tony, great defense that time, and then once again, the slap it out of bounds. He never let Karnishevs get set. He just kept pushing at him and running, and Karnishevs had to force that shot up. 21 on the shot clock. Tony there over there to again. poke the ball away, quick hand. Not a noted defender, Tony Kukoc, but... Nice pass inside and a one touch back out to Rogers, who can't get it to fall. A loose ball foul that's going to be on Tarlach. That'll be his third. Bob, speaking of Tony and, and, and the comments that Peter made at the, you know, at the halftime about the possible surgery there for Tony Kukoc on that foot. Uh, this team, you know, the most publicized team in, in, in the history of sports and the most discussed. I mean, every single rumor, every single little comment uh, so analyzed. Uh, Impossible to figure out what is going to happen with Tony Kukoc's foot. Winnington. 
Oh, hit the top of the basket. He stays in bounds. <laughs> that's that's Boy, why. When he, when he can look right over here and, and give us a big smile on that one. <laughs> that Come on, he's got a tip dunk tonight. He's got a jumper that rolled off the top of the board. 8.7 boards. He says, so five on Longley, no problem. Uh, very difficult for him to sit out the playoffs last year because he's been a mainstream guy in that eight, nine-man rotation for Chicago for years. There's the jump hook from Charlotte. Well, he's the perfect complimentary backup center. Can come in and handle the ball, can shoot the perimeter jump shot, can play great position defense. And when you're going against the Akeems and the Shags and David Robinson, you need guys who can be an offensive factor. They have to hit that 10 to 12 footer, Joe, right? They're facing yeah. the best. Jordan with the pump fake. Yes. And the basket, and Michael has 22. Remember the scoring record by an NBA player in the McDonald's Championships is 34, set by Patrick Ewing. So, everything going Bill Wennington's way. Eight rebounds. Seven points. You are watching the NBA on NBC. The McDonald's Championship is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Buy Snickers. Not going anywhere for a while? Grab a Snickers. Hungry? Why wait? And buy Sprite. Image is nothing. Thirst is everything. Obey your thirst. Sprite. Ahmad Rashad back at Bercy here in Paris, and basketball has just invaded Paris. All the kids around here are here, and I found a ball boy. That I just want to know, who is your, uh, I see how you say, who is your favorite player? Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, yes. And your favorite team is obviously? Chicago Bulls. Okay, so you speak pretty good English. Where are you from? New York. From New York, huh? Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, there you have it. And your name is? Um, Joseph. Joseph what? Vessi. Joseph Vesey. Joseph Vesey. I pick all the Parisian kids while I'm here. It just makes it a lot more fun. Back to you, Bob. <laughs> a proud papa, Peter, with his son as a ball boy. He's the only one last night who paid me attention to the opponents of the Bulls. Uh, all the French ball boys were taking care of the Bulls. They wouldn't even help the opponent, which was the Paris Saint-Germain <laughs> home team. Their own team. Peter had his whole family over here. Lovely and talented wife, Joan. Two coach following inside. Winnington coming away with his eighth rebound. Jordan. Vukcevic trying to cover him. There's the double team. Two coach. Penetrating oh, beautiful. ball. Beautiful look away fake. Missed the lay in, however. Here is Michael Hawkins. Hawkins, terrific left hand in the open court, but has not been getting to the foul line like he did last night on the break, QB. Karnishimus, that's a three. Karnishimus hit a three late in the ball game for Olympiakos last night against the South American champion. Kicked his leg out and drew the foul and made a four-point play out of it, which really ensured the victory and gave Olympiakos the ticket to the championship game tonight. Bulls lead down to nine. Really stolen. Vuskovic has been playing good defense away from the ball on Jordan. Three on two. Offensive foul. That was just excellent transition defense. They had a three on two. They kept the ball on the outside lane rather than get the ball into the middle. Now this is Michael Hawkins at his best. Take it into the middle of the floor, kick it out to the corner. Karnisovic is an excellent three-point shooter. Now this is just bad judgment. You had a three on two, kept the ball in the outside lane. The defense cut down the angle on you. Michael takes the shot. Michael learned that charge, of course, from Pete Smith. Get it to the middle when there's two That's defenders right. back, when there's one. Oh, Jordan just over the top. Lennington tried to follow for another follow jam. Hey, come on. He's a, on the Canadian national team, Bob. Come on. He's played this type of basketball for years. He's in the zone tonight. Bill's motto, there is no gravity. Air Wennington, 9 on the shot clock for Olympiakos. 5-10 in the third period. Olympiakos has narrowed the Bulls 16 points. Up. Down to 9 now. 2-1. Two, Gotta shoot it. That did not beat the buzzer. You don't hear, they have a, a kind of a weak buzzer. <laughs> I don't want to criticize per se, it's a beautiful place. The buzzer's a little bit weak though. It sounded, you can't hear it, but the officials do. Well, they need to work on a few things. Fortunately, w one thing that they've really worked on is the buzzer up top goes right off. Is, is improving the, the, the size of the beds and the showers over here in the fabulous hotel we're staying in. 
Jordan taking it inside. Bad oh. back in and the foul for Michael Jordan. Well, Michael now be. has 24 with an opportunity for 25. Well, there should be frustration, Bob. You, you had four red shirts inside, and Jordan not only shoots it, he gets the rebound and puts the ball back up in the basket. And the frustrating thing is if you're coaching Olympiakos right now, you were just down nine, you had a three on two, a chance to get it to seven, you get the violation, you come down at this end of the floor, and you give Michael Jordan two shots and a foul shot. They had the same chance late in the second period. Uh, not taking her time on a break and didn't take advantage of it. Jordan. Michael, 25. Michael with all the flash balls going on. Talking about this morning at practice when whenever he goes anywhere, the paparazzi here, the guys on the motorcycle with the photographer right next to him, just chasing him down. Yeah, Ahmad, we'll have to go to Ahmad in a minute to talk about that. Ahmad has, uh, thinks that maybe some of the attention to Michael is drawn, maybe not all, by Michael. Yeah, yeah that's right, Bob. Well, my driver actually said he drove the president a couple of months ago when he was here, and Michael has more security around him than the president has. So any place you go, you have the people pull up in the vans and jump out and make everybody stop so they can get out and walk around, which causes a little bit of attention. I actually thought that the security was for me, but obviously it's for Michael. Uh, well, well I th that's all right. I thought the security in our hotel was for me, and it was for the Turkish Prime Minister. Michael Jordan answers. He lost the ball and still got it back. The concentration, the focus, the discipline. Give uh, Tony Kukoc a major assist on that. He threaded the needle with that one. Put it right on the money to Michael. Michael has 27. Remember, the NBA scoring record is held by Patrick Ewing at 34. Michael has 27 now. Nice closeout by Bill Winnington that time to force the missed shot. When the Bulls get into the regular season, someone's got to pick up that 7-8 rebounds a game that Scotty Pippen gets. And it's going to be interesting to see where it comes from at NBA time. Kukoc threw that ball away for the Bulls' turnover. 3 26 to go in the third period. And but a moment ago, Bob, he had a beautiful high post pass. When you get a guy who's 6'10", like Tony Kukoc, and pass from the high post and stroke that jumper, that creates all kinds of offensive opportunities. And a timeout on the floor with the Bulls leading it by 12. <laughs> the officials say, no, we're not letting you have the timeout. They'll have to chase the ball boys who have become the broom boys off to the baseline. And we're back in here. They're going to trigger play with 3.26 to go in the third period. And the Bulls up by 12. There's Dick Mavetta, red-faced, with a little bit of a smile after that. Bill Jackson got the foul. Oh, Michael Hawkins still can't finish. But Phil's been having a great time here in Paraguay. He spent a lot of time before. His wife June is with him, as many of the Bulls' wives are. Jordan inside. Baseline. That's the Russian Greek, Amanatidis, the seven footer. He's only 18 years old, number 13, who got the rebound. Amanatidis played a, a, a much better game last night than he's having tonight. Naki. Fouls on Bushwick. This second unit that's out on the floor right now did an excellent job in the first half for Olympiacos. Olympiacos down 12, 2.53 to go in the third quarter. They inbound under their own basket. This is Tomic. Nakic. Naturalized Greek citizens, by the way, from the Balkan countries. Karlach. Likewise, Scotty Burrell with the rebound, and here's Steve Kerr. Now this lineup for Chicago has got to find some offensive creativity here. Burrell's the guy who should be handling it most of the time, trying to spot up Kerr and Bushler. Shot clock to seven. And five. Burrell, three, double team. Great pass. Just in time to stop the shot clock and then the follow by Judd Bushley. That was no only Wait a second. No, I'm just sitting here because you're on the volleyball circuit on television, and you know Judd Bushler is an outstanding volleyball player, okay? And that's what that looked like. Curling into the paint. That's a tough shot by Nakic. Kerr from Bushler. Both from Arizona. Brown. 
New Mexico State. Kind of a Southwestern flavor at the moment. Well, New Mexico, Longley. The job that Lute Olson does at, for Arizona Wildcats. Fantastic. They settle on the shot clock. Tipped away. Oh, here you go. Three on two again. They'll go for the three. Oh, Vukovic with the penetration and a bad pass to Nakic. The foul on the Bulls. Whenever you play European teams, you always know that when they're out there on the break, two on one, three on two, someone's running for a three. Now, here you go. Now, watch this as it's coming over the top. Just Judge just puts that one right back up again. What would you call that putting it back over the net soft? No term? Well, maybe the gator, maybe the, the, the dink. We'll go with the dink there. Drop shot. You're watching the NBA on NBC. Ahmad Rashad back here in Paris at Paris where the Bulls lead Olympiacos by 14. Tonight on NBC is more of our must-see weekend. The Game 1 of the World Series at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific as Dave Justice and the American League champion Cleveland Indians battle Bobby Bonilla and the National League champion Florida Marlins. That's Game 1 of the World Series tonight at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific on NBC. And just to practice some of my French, Bob, a vous, Bob. A vous to you. Ama. By the way, Bobby Bonilla is said, or they say that he will play tonight. You know, he had a sore hamstring for the Marlins, but he is saying he will play in game one. Burrell from Longley. A four-man play. Start the ball on one side, swing it across to the guard, dump it into the center for the backdoor. Beautiful combination basketball. That's their third backdoor layup off of that pass. That's more baskets than they get in two months in the NBA because everyone knows that guy's got on that baseline. Under a minute in the period, Tarlots with the 15-foot mid-range jumper. 72 to 60. Bulls by 12. They've maintained this 8 to 12 to 14 point lead most of this game. I'm surprised that these teams over here have stayed with the man-to-man -man defense unless you're allowed to play zone. The Bulls not shooting so well. Michael was saying last night he was shocked that Paris went out of that zone. That zone was giving the Bulls all kinds of fits early on. Shot clock to two. Bushler has to throw up the prayer and hits the three. Josh Bushler with time running out on the shot clock. 22 seconds remaining in the period. It's a 15-point Bulls lead. Bushler hit that huge three-point shot in the closing moments of one of the Bulls' home victories against the Utah Jazz in this past spring finals. Chicago's only hit two threes. They're two of ten from beyond the arc. Tomich will try a three. Longley. Time expires. After three periods, Bulls by 15. Michael Jordan got some rest. He'll be back. 27 minutes, 27 points. So what is new? This copyrighted telecast of the National Basketball Association may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcast without the express written consent of the NBA. Welcome back. NBA on NBC. Olympiacos trailing by 15, having only 17 points in the third period. Our celebrity camera operator, our guest. Look at that. There's a lot of talent. That's an expensive hired hand. Cheryl swoops a brand new mama, three and a half month old son named Jordan Eric, and yes, she asked Michael Jordan if it would be alright, and she asked her husband too, to name the baby Jordan Eric Jackson. Congratulations to Cheryl Swoops of the Houston Comets WNBA. Terrific season for the WNBA, and a lot of the women are over here being part of the the promotion of international basketball. 35% you know, of the NBA internet uh, contracts are, 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 are international. 35% and 15% of the marketing is international as well. So NBA is huge all over the world. 11.36 to go in this ball game with the Bulls up by 15. Tarlot can't finish. Rogers with the offensive board. Karnishevis with a new shot clock. And he draws the foul. 
really been a parade to the foul line here in the second half. Slowed the game down considerably from the great excitement. Early Viacos field goal percentage only 35. The Chicago centers. This is Longley who's got five fouls and Winnington 15 points, 16 rebounds. Center by committee. They've been doing it that way for quite a while in Chicago. And Tarlax tonight with 14, 11 boards, make it 15. Well, they solved, Hubie, their rebound problem from last night. They were, they got killed on the board. They gave up 20 rebounds to Strulins, and tonight they've just been everywhere and been able to control Tarlac pretty much. And no second shot opportunities for Olympiacos tonight. Well, I like the stat because Longley and Winnington very quietly are going about their business and doing an excellent job. You combine them together, anytime you say 15 points and 16 rebounds at that center position, you got to be happy. Bulls by 13, Burrell in the paint with nowhere to go. Shot clock at five. Brown over Hawkins. Big bucket by Randy Brown. Brown looks big by Hawkins standards. Well, this unit for Chicago is going to have to find some sort of offensive continuity because they're going to get a lot of playing time together. I think Phil Jackson will like what he saw with Kukoc in that starting lineup tonight. Well, you look at the second unit, we remember that Rodman is going to be on the first unit. Kathy would be out on the floor with the screw. Karnishevis <laughs> took the flop, trying to get the fourth look out, missed the three, ahead Burrell, and that's because Karnishevis went down on the floor after the shot. His man leaked out for the easy lay-in. Defense. Forces the tough shot, the quick rebound, the short outlet, look ahead, the guys releasing from the weak side. Beautiful basketball. Chicago's biggest lead. Mishibus. This is the three again. Burrell off to the races. Turn. I like I like this group. The spirit that they have. Uh, they get the ball out quickly. They push it up the floor. In the first half, they came in. They did a nice job. Contributed 16 points in a short period of time while they were shooting 7 for 13. And this group, Hubie, focuses tremendously on the defensive end. 7 on the shot clock for Hawkins. Nice step out by Longley. Yeah, it took away that pick and roll. Air ball. Well, Tomic and Karnishevich are their two main three-point shooters in their starting rotation. And they are just having a horrible game. Yeah. Tomic does not have one single point. Steve Kerr with that basket. Timeout as the Bulls have their biggest lead. It is now by 22 points. This is a nice kick out and look long. Always look up. Scotty, send it down. You're watching the NBA on NBC. This is the McDonald's Championship. I'm on Rashad back here in Paris at Bear Sea, where Chicago leads Olympiacos by 22 points. Musty weekend continues tomorrow with an NFL doubleheader beginning at 12 noon Eastern with the NFL on NBC. Greg Gumbel minus me and company visit with two of the league's premier stars, Deion Sanders and John Elway, plus a full examination of perhaps the most intriguing current pro football rivalry, the Patriots versus the Jets. And just let to say this to Greg. Greg, Fumer Monkey Buku, which means I miss you much. Bob, you said you were studying French all week. I believe you, Ahmad. Bulls have 34 points off their bench here tonight. And they put Michael Jordan back in the lineup, even though 22 point lead. Maybe David Stern rang, rang up uh, Phil Jackson on the phone and said, hey, look, these people, are, they came to see Michael for the one time in his career. Michael Jordan with a bounce pass and not a very good one. And the ball is picked off by Bukcevic, who takes it all the way and then dishes. And the basket by Nakic. Michael Jordan, we, we bring you back up to date with our little soap opera on the scoring. The NBA player who scored the most points in a McDonald's championship play is Patrick Ewing with 34. Michael has 27 right now. Now this Bull team, they've got to start thinking about helping Michael get his game off to make the show complete. Ahmad, does Michael know that uh, 34 is the record? No, he doesn't know that 34 is the record, but just during that last time out, Phil Jackson walked over to him and asked him if he wanted to go back in, and he said, certainly. <laughs> there you go, Patrick Ewing uh, versus Pissarro Scalamini in 1990. Larry Bird, look at the names on there. Benny Shays, come on, he belongs right in that group. 
Michael Jordan had 28 last night. Ewings was in overtime. That was really the closest NBA uh, near loss here because obviously it was tied and it required a Wilkins, a Gerald Wilkins three-pointer at the buzzer to send that game into overtime versus Cavallini Passero. Well, you think about last night when they lost, they won by seven points. That's the fourth lowest amount of points that we had. Lakers by two, uh, the Knicks by four, Denver by six, and last night, not only the seven is what, but the 89 points is the lowest amount of points that NBA team ever scored in the McDonald's Open. Yeah, the next lowest was 111 by Boston. Four on the shot clock. Hawkins oh. lost Hawkins. the dribble. One. It counts. That's a two. Nakic knocks it down. And Nakic has 13. Leading scorer is Karnishevis for Olympiakos. He has 19. Chicago has completely shut down Michael Hawkins. Yeah, well, you know, Bill, he had a very difficult first half shooting three for 11. But what's happening is they're pounding on him physically every time he comes down into the lane. Longley grabs the rebound away from Tarlick and muscles it back inside. Luke. You hear it? It's for Paris, and they've already picked up on Luke. They're not booing him, they're saying Luke. Nine points, nine rebounds, and five assists for the big redhead. And five fouls. I mean, he's filling up the whole cup. Well, he just got his sixth right there. <laughs> As we were blowing a little smoke on Luke, all right? <laughs> You know, Tarlax is saying about time he was, you know, horsing me out of that low post area. Well, Tarlax is just one of the two guys as Joe Klein comes in for All the right. first time. Joe did not play last night. The 35-year-old Joe Klein, who signed with the Bulls this summer as a free agent. Bill Cartwright is on the Bulls bench coaching, and Klein kind of becomes the Cartwright factor. Well, it's as if Jerry Krause has this thing for seven-foot centers who don't have championships, and he sort of goes around at the end of their careers and says, let's get him one, too. Hawkins finally Yeah, but he's good insurance. Drop. Good insurance. Oh, terrific we know, pickup. Joe can board, play a little defense for you. He's great in the locker room. Excellent good guy. Terrific personality. And shoot the jumper like oh, Bill yeah. Wennington, too. No, they, 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 you can play with Joe with confidence. He really knows how to play. Nakich knocks Joe Klein down. And it's 88-68. Bulls continue to lead by 20. 6.58 to go in this 1997 McDonald's Championship from Bercy in Paris. The McDonald's Championship is brought to you by the irresistible taste that makes you say, did somebody say McDonald's? By Nissan, who reminds you that life is a journey. Enjoy the ride. And by Miller Lite, who reminds you that anything can happen at Miller Time. Beautiful nighttime view of Paris and the Eiffel Tower. 20-point Chicago lead with 6.58 remaining in the game. And Joe Klein, who just came in, gets his right ankle stepped on here and goes out limping. Ahmad, uh, any word on whether it's serious or not? No, it's not serious, Bob. But what happened was they banged knees, knee on knee, which is... Ah. Really painful. Is that French knee on knee? No, but it's really painful, especially if it happens to somebody else. He's fine, Bob. <laughs> Thanks. You're, you're so full of the French phrases, I thought you were really sliding another one in on this thing. Joe Klein, 13th season, 35 years old, free agent this summer. Well, Ahmad just had his knee replaced. So a, a knee on knee there would not be as serious. All right, I noticed Ahmad didn't, didn't laugh. Not a funny thing. Hawkins, 14 on the shot clock, 6.42 to go in the game, and the Bulls up 20. Vukcevic, air ball. Look, they took Michael Jordan out. Yeah, Brown's in, Morell's in. Rebound, Monakitas. Well, I think when Phil Jackson saw Joe Klein limping back to the sideline, he said, yeah. I'm not taking any chances here. Uh, good point. How many operations did you have in your career? I had about 30, Bob. Ah. It was uh, a tough way to go. 30. Jordan with 27 on the bench now. Kerr with 10. Nobody else in double figures for the Bulls. Karnischewicz with 19 points and good balance, but not enough of it for Olympiakos. And there, we, we, repeat, we said this earlier. Olympiakos, as Michael sits down, is without one of their stars, maybe their best player, uh, 
Paniotis Fasulis, who has ankle surgery. He's due back with this team in mid-November. You may remember him in the States, played with North Carolina State, and was a second-round pick of Portland back, uh, what, a decade ago. Well, he's a shot blocker, rebounder. He's been on the national team for over 10 seasons. You know, he's that guy, the eraser in the back for you that's going to block shots, and he gets 12 or 13 points. So you can see, you add him to this team, it's a good, competitive front line for European basketball. Randy Brown, nice inside to the cutting Kuko, who draws the foul. Tony did not score a single point last night. He started tonight and has only four points in this game. Uh, Kuko, uh, Phil Jackson said it, Michael Jordan said it, and Tony's the only one who didn't say it, and that is that he's out of shape. Well, he didn't play at all so at and all this summer, he had to rest that foot. And Tony's never been big on the weight training or the swimming or the stationary bike. The 1997-98 season marks NBA.com's third year. The official website of the NBA. New features include live in-game box scores, same-night video highlights, and audio broadcast of every NBA game. All this only at your ultimate online resource, NBA.com. I dialed them up from my hotel room on my laptop last night. Kerr Brown. And I guess that counts as an international hit on, a, <laughs> on the NBA line. And a big-time phone call. Oh, there it is again. Kerr to Brown again. <laughs> Shoot a three. Shoot a three. Back to Kerr. Brown. Number oh, This is getting ugly here yeah, for Olympiakos. And, and, and what I like, if I'm a Chicago fan, is the fact that the second unit is doing an excellent job. Randy Brown played well last night. Tonight, he is six for eight causing turnovers, and more important, getting the ball out on the break in the transition and finding the right people. And it looks like we're going to have a quarterback in the game in a moment. Oh, that steal by Randy Brown. Looking for help. Kukoc on the follow. Kukoc <laughs> with some mustard, some Dijon, and he missed it. I said a quarterback about to come into the ball game. You'll see what I mean momentarily when there's a dead ball, if there will be a dead ball. Well, the game is getting ugly, and it's got to get some sort of structure back. Right Wine. now, it's just a fast-break drill for Chicago. It's 98-63. Burrell, he's fine. Well, you think of this, about this a second. This is second unit, second unit. Now, I hope that the Chicago Bulls' second unit is a little bit better than the second unit of the Piac. And now it's the Chicago Bulls' third unit. The third unit is led off the bench by Rusty LaRue, the former quarterback and basketball player at Wake Forest, and another ACC player, Dante Calabrio, comes on to the floor. Boris Gorent, who is a, a French player and on the Bulls' training camp roster, is also going to come in momentarily. In 25 years from now, it'll all be eight. Michael Jordan and I were over in Paris, busting everybody. Exactly. And also, Keith Booth is in the ballgame. Booth uh, had his jersey retired, as a matter of fact, at Maryland. Another ACC player. Now, it's difficult for these players to make this team. Because if you look at the Bulls roster, with Judd Buchler on there, Scotty Pippen coming back, you have 13 guys with no-cut contracts. Now, you'd like to say, well, everyone loves these four kids right here. They say they've got a lot of talent. They'd be kids that they would bring to the team in case of a, an injury. But you and I both know it's so difficult to make the ball. But Booth has a, has a three-year no-cut contract as a, as a signee uh, as a first-round draft choice. All first-round draft choices get those three-year contracts. Now, they can cut him, but they still have to pay him. That's correct. And are you trying to tell me now that we are going to see a a, a, a convenient injury the day before <laughs> well, cut down or what? Is that what we're looking at here? <laughs> I'm looking at Joe Klein. Yeah. <laughs> 359. We just saw the knee injury yeah. right there. <laughs> oh, no. We don't want to say that about Joe. No, no, no. No big guy wants to get clunked on the inside of the knee. Garrett's with the lay-in attempt. He will get in the box score, however, as you go to the free throw line and through the foul. The 353, as I said, to go in the game. And the Bulls leading it by 23. 93 to 70. I have a feeling we have seen the last of Michael in Paris. Well, they're not going to put it back in. The Bulls will go out and have a great time tonight. The plane leaves midday tomorrow. Their big 747 charter jet. Michael's already got the ice on. 
I like Keith Booth, though. I've seen him since he was a high school player in the Washington, D.C. area. He and a bunch of his buddies came out in gym shorts and no shirts in a Las Vegas high school tournament, and they busted Jason Kidd's high school team, which had glorious uniforms and sweatsuits and coaches and ties and everything. These six kids from Washington, D.C. just came out and ran this California team, led by Jason Kidd, off the court. It was a thing of beauty. Well, he, he showed during his career at Maryland a great heart. He, he's a terrific player from 17 feet down. If he can just work on his game, like right here, we just have a beautiful finish inside of 15 feet. But when you look at uh, Booth's game, if he can just extend to that 21 to 22 feet so that they would have to play him on the perimeter, uh, the young man has a future because he is an outstanding athlete. He'll be one of the biggest needs for the international teams as they try to catch up to the NBA in a general level. Yeah, I, I don't care which country you go into, Bill. It's the defense. They, they just don't put the time into the defense or the physical effort. So when they do play against teams that have any kind of quickness in shot blocking and then they play them physical, they get overcome. And we, we have seen it here tonight. You say, well, they're playing hard. Yes, they are. They're doing an excellent job, but they're getting out quick. And then the intimidation, the intimidation. All five of the Chicago guys can get faked out, recover, and still intimidate. That's what's missing from the game. How many more years is it going to take? Well, I, no, I just think it comes with uh, the, the athletes, and then also the coaching has got to step up to spend more time with the defense. Fine commits the foul on the drive by Karopolis and we have three minutes to go in the game with the Bulls up 22 points and both coaches clearing their benches well the past champions of McDonald's this tournament began in 1987 was called the it was an invitational tournament to call the McDonald's Open Milwaukee Madrid Rome Barcelona Paris Munich London some great spots NBA has never lost a game and it's not going to happen here in Paris Welcome back to Bercy. Hey, how about the bottle of wine? You can't read it from this view, but it says Chateau Jordan. Uh, he did some real estate work here with the baguettes. We're selling for 13,500, by the way, at Bercy. Can I borrow your glasses, Bob? Those are awesome glasses. Well, you've got to have good vision. <laughs> As you know, it goes with the game. The free throw is good. Three minutes to go. Bulls by 20 points. Youngsters who are getting a chance to play in Bulls uniforms. They won't be able to play in them in a couple more weeks when the Bulls get ready for the regular season. And the ball is ripped loose by Nakic. And the foul by Gorin. Well, plus you're getting to see a lot of the juniors who ride the bench for the European teams. And one of the difficulties that they have in developing their players is that the prime of their young careers 18 19 20 years old all they do is sit the bench because there's no college opportunities here uh in europe well you look at this team right here olympiacos they have one player at 16 years one at 19 one at 18 and then one at 20 and and only one of them is getting any action at all full court pressure from olympiacos knocks it out of bounds and, and it'll be Olympiacos ball with 2.44 to go, and it's a 19-point lead. Hubie, those are the years that you've got to have the ball in your hand. You've got to have the game experience sitting on the bench in your 16 and 17. That, that's a waste. Well, you know, that what the answer to that is is the worldwide tournaments in the summer for the junior teams of Absolutely. 22 and under, and that's where they say they, they make it up. They practice with the pro team all year. They get in, you know, sparingly, but the key is in the summer times they get their, their games. But I'm like you, you know, it's the old story of how much success can you have and how many games can you play in the summer game. Amanatidis uh, reached over the back of Joe Klein, who is nearly twice as old. Uh, he'll love this story, but we maybe should talk with him about this. Right. Amanatidis is 18 years old, Joe Klein soon to be 36. If he comes over, we'll tell him. 
<laughs> He's Joe, no, Joe's over here saying, they're fouling me, they're fouling me. Speaking it's a kid, Joe, it's a kid. How can he hurt you? He's just a kid. So, speaking of the junior team, you'd be, uh, how about the job that Argentina did? Remember, they took fourth in the Junior World Championships, the last one. They come in here, South America had never won a game in the McDonald's competition, and the Argentinian team from Cordoba takes third place with two big victories and uh, after the tough loss last night to Olympiacos at the buzzer on a questionable call. Yeah, it was 9.6 seconds left. Three-point shot by Karnishevis. He kicked his leg out and they called the foul. And he got a four-point play which really ensured the victory. And Dick Vera stepping in very quickly here, so yep. none of the tempers get out of hands. 2.08 to go in this ball. Game. See, Zerbenko just came in the game at 6'10. This is his first action in the tournament. He's only 22 years of age. He's his third year with the team. He was born in Russia and has moved over here to, to Greece to play and participate with this ball club. Yeah, now he's playing. No fun. Guns, nice nice. Oh, they like him, right? They really like his talent. Well, they're not going to bring in any guys who are just going to waste time. These guys can all play, but as you said, there are just no roster spots. But maybe they can land with a team in Europe. Well, we all know the majority of the NBA teams are hiding two guys. You know, they either have 13 or 14 guys on. It just comes down to whether or not they want to pay the salary. Nikolos with the jumper. Because that lower back injury is one of the biggest things we have in the NBA today. <laughs> Next basket by Chicago will put them in the triple digits. Only scored 89 last night, did the Bulls. That's the lowest amount of points scored ever by an NBA team in the McDonald Championship. You know, you look at Ivkovic over there, the coach of this team, and you say, you know, has the guy ever really coached any players? Oh, well, being the Yugoslavian coach for eight years, the national team, He's only coach Petrovic, Zivac, Brankovic, Pospai, Kukoc, Raja, uh, Danilovic, all of which who have played in the NBA. And he was a terrific player himself. That's right. But, but See the Nets number three? That's the number worn by Dragan Petrovic when he played for the New Jersey Nets, the late Dragan Petrovic, who died in 1993 in a car accident, and for whom the trophy for the most valuable player in the McDonald's championship is named. And the sad thing about all that is, naturally, he was a household name throughout all of Europe, where he played for the Yugoslavia team and then also ended his career over here with Real Madrid. Then he went to Portland, played there for three years as a backup. But when he went to New Jersey, he blossomed. And he made the third team All-NBA team when he finished that year with the Nets and then unfortunately was killed in an automobile accident in Germany over the summer. Just a great talent. That would have to be the highest level that an international player ever achieved, the third team all NBA team, wouldn't you say you'd be? Oh absolutely. I mean Bob, when you think I mean when you think about it, Bill, it's it, it's just incredible what he did because you know at Portland it was so difficult for him to get playing time oh, behind Drexler and, and Porter. Oh come on, that was that was a tough play. Less than a minute to go in this ball game with the Bulls up 101-78. It's been Chicago literally all the way. They held a 8 to 12 point lead for most of the game. Michael Jordan has knocked down 27 points in 29 minutes. Michael shot 50% from the field, five rebounds, three assists, and spent the most of this quarter on the bench and Michael and the Bulls will stay here tonight then take their 747 charter back to Chicago and the rumor is that Dennis Rodman will be hanging around the Windy City on Monday. Well, that'll be good. And, and the more they can keep Michael Jordan on the bench during the course of the season, oh, Booth, unable to handle the ball. But... But the more they're able to rest Michael Jordan and let other guys come in and play terrific basketball, that will serve the Bulls over the course of this season, and I think for years to come. Calabria steps into the passing lane, leads Gorenz. Okay, this guy's some magic. Oh. And a good rundown. That's all right. He went for the block. Pettis. Pettis is only 16 years old. That's right. The man who tried to block that shot. Excuse me, that's not Pettis. That's Nikos Miklos. They changed numbers just before the game. It is Nikos Miklos who made the block.
He's going for a slam dunk exhibition here, and that's a good defensive play by Pettis. The guy's a little showboat there. Yeah, no, no, everyone is booing except for one thing. He almost blocked the shot. I mean, he got his hand on the ball. He just caught him with his upper body. If he had gone straight in and dunked it, the defense would have had no chance. But when he tried to go the reverse and slowed it down a little bit, ouch. Six seconds. LaRue looking for points. Gives it up. Talk about unselfish. Gorens draws the foul with 1.5 seconds left. And Michael says, hey, is there is there golf? Is there an inside? Oh, I've got to mention this, by the way. Speaking of golf and Michael Jordan, this building we're in, the uh, sports palace called Bercy, is in a park in Paris called Bercy Park. And the zoning rules of the city of Paris is you can't build a building in this area and take away the greenery with concrete. So the architects planted grass on the walls of the building. This building is covered in grass on the walls. Amazing. It is, it's a beautiful building indeed. And it's housed a, a fantastic tournament. The upside of this building is since 91 when McDonald's was there the last time are the lights that you can now see in this building. <laughs> and that's the final score. You see the photographers and Ahmad Rashad surrounding Michael Jordan. Bulls win at 104-78. Ahmad. All right, thanks, Bob. Michael, you've won five NBA championships, but this one is a very important championship, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, a lot of people uh, felt that if we didn't come here and uh, win it, McDonald's open, then our championship would be tarnished. I didn't take it in that effect, but, you know, we quiet all the, the critics and, and basically came out and, you know, even though we were not at full strength, we won the tournament and you know, I'm very happy to get off the year on a good foot. Everybody came out to see you at 27 points in 29 minutes. They got a view of Jordan, didn't they? I hope so. You know, I just do my job whenever I'm on the basketball court and, uh, you know, I don't know if I please him, but I did my job. All right, congratulations to you, Michael. Thanks. All right, Bob. Thanks, Armand. Been a joy, but working with you today, uh, Michael Jordan, just another regular guy. Bulls win it, 104-78 for Hubie Brown, Bill Walton, Ahmad Rashad, and Peter Vesey. This is Bob Neal saying so long from Paris. This has been a presentation of the NBA on NBC.